All right, welcome and thanks for joining in today. I'm Will with uh, Recreation and Parks, and today we're going to show you how to make a canoe paddle. All right, the basics, the three items that you'll need are wood supplies and a lot of time, or a little time, maybe a lot of time. Uh, the basics here, this program started as a program to make a canoe paddle out of scrap wood. You could also use store-bought wood, that's, that's plenty fine. Uh, so moving on to the first portion of this with wood. Um, we've got great choice wood and we've got what I used. Uh, so I used uh, cedar for the pretty much the blade, the handle, and the shaft. I've also used pine for the blade and the handle and uh, sycamore for the blade and the handle as well. Um, the cedar wood I uh, found kind of behind a dumpster. The pine wood were leftover pallets and some scrap wood from other projects. And the sycamore were uh, donated logs that were kind of curing in the back of our wood shop here with the county. Um, got a couple of other projects that include cherry, walnut, and ash, kind of very popular woods with canoe paddles. Next, we have our supplies and the tools. Uh, this list can be as big or as little as you, as you, as you have or, or you want. Uh, first, with the tools, we've got a clamps, the planer, the sander, a jigsaw or a bandsaw, the router, an edge grinder. Um, kind of the optional choices on those tool lists would be the planer, the router, and the edge grinder. And we will talk about those in slides as we go through this. The supplies here, we've got glue, sealant, stain, a writing implement, wood, a solid table or a work surface. Uh, we also have gloves, ear and eye protection, as well as a face covering. Um, and lastly, a brush or a rag to kind of help you. And we'll, we'll talk about those as well. Uh, with the glue, the stain, and the sealant, if you're going to use this actually in the water, try to find something waterproof or water resistant. Uh, you'll find some like maybe a shellac isn't, isn't water resistant and uh, it's going to help. The others that are water protection will help with your, your paddles lifetime longevity durability uh, within the water. If you're just going to hang this on the wall, a shellac would be fine. Um, most likely you're going to be kind of tearing it down, sanding it back down, and, and, and recovering it with that stain and sealant every two to five years, depending on your use. Moving on to time, uh, I say this aspect depends on your tools and supplies. If you've just got a, a bunch of sandpaper and a one big piece of wood, it's, it's going to take a little bit longer, but it could be anywhere from a three to four hour project to a project that's a couple weeks. All right, we've got some steps here for you. Step one, obtain the material. Step two, select the pieces and uh, cut to size. Number three, we've got glue and clamp. Four, design and shaping. Five, draw your center lines. Six is sand and trim your paddle blade. Seven, we're gonna sand and uh, shape our paddle shaft. Eight, we are gonna shape our paddle grip. Nine, we are going to sand, sand, and sand again. It's a fun process of a lot of sanding. And the final step here is the finish with your stain and seal of the paddle. So, moving on to obtaining the materials. Where do you find these materials? Uh, there's, there's kind of online listings for free wood. There is leftover parts from construction supplies. Uh, make sure you ask first. Uh, lumber yards usually have a, a, a pre-cut or a, a kind of a post-cut section where people bring back wood that they have used uh, and they didn't use it. Um, just beyond tree lines, people kind of toss things, so that's a good spot to look. Or uh, again, uh, where I found that cedar was behind the dumpster, so the trash or you know wood without a purpose pile. So uh, you know if it's if it's not being used and it's kind of on somebody's property or deal, you know, you, you want to ask them, but if it's on the side of the road, feel free to go ahead and grab it. Here's another look at some of that fine wood that I found kind of here and there. 
Um, and this is the wood that we made a canoe paddle with. All right, so we want to we want to get the sizes, cut them down to size. Um, these two pictures, these two images here, show you a post cut. Uh, we're going to go and show you some of these uh, what we used to actually cut the wood and make them these sizes. Uh, the measurements we had used were with a paddle, and there's there's the paddle that's on the right there. Um, the paddle that we used kind of had a grip with a, a five inch width. Uh, the shaft was about 60 inches, or the shaft, you can make the shaft as long as and short as you want, uh, depending on how you're going to use it, but if you're going to use it actually to paddle, you want to get it between your nose and your shoulders. Um, we made ours about 60 inches. The, uh, the blade width, so the paddle width of that blade is about 8 inches. There we go. And the length or the height of it from the, the bottom to the middle there where the, the neck, the shaft meets the, uh, the blade is about 18 inches long. And you want all of your pieces as you're putting them together into a one and a quarter inch thickness and then you can kind of sand down from there so you have room to play with. Uh, there I am with the miter saw. On one side we are using the cedar, we're cutting the cedar. On the other side, on the right side, we're, we're actually cutting down that sycamore log to run it through a few different processes to get that, that, that piece just right for us. Um, let, you, let you look at those for a little bit longer here. And here it shows uh, me using the table saw on both sides and we are getting the pine which is going to be the inner and we'll show you what, it, what it's going to look like here in a minute but we're getting that pine down right just right and again that inch and a quarter thickness and then you, you sand down from there so you have room to play with and here we go the paddle on the right is the paddle that we're we have already made the, the, the two on the left are in a current set of four that we're making. Um, I like to do a quick lineup of all the pieces that we've cut and put them together uh, because the next step, the gluing, the applying the adhesive to these, you, you want to line them up and it, and it makes it a little bit less, less messy, more organized, less chance for error here. All right, so now that we've got, and this, is, this shows you all the four that we're, we're kind of currently making. Um, pretty much the same supplies, pine, cedar, and some of these have a little bit of sycamore in them. Um, we've got our clamps out, and we are ready for the glue. All right. So the gluing and clamping. Let's let's let this one begin. You. Take your, your, your glue, and again, we want to make a nice, uh, if you're going to use it in the water, uh, water resistant or waterproof, a marine glue, whatever you can find at your local hardware stores would, would work great. Um, you want to start at the inside out or the outside in, whichever, whichever way you do it, just you know, remain consistent as that's the way you're laying down your planks, because you're going to have to lay them on their side to put the glue on, and then you put the next piece right on top of that. So you want to start there, smear the glue using a brush or, or a gloved finger. Uh, less mess is nicer and easier. Once you get this glue laid down in place and you, you push the pieces back together, you can kind of see this paddle is really coming together. Uh, here we go. Clamping, clamping, clamping. Let the clamping begin. I went with a, a little wild with the paddle on the right, just to just to have fun. We were just doing one paddle. Let's let's use all the clamps on that one paddle. Uh, the image on the left is is kind of an appropriate amount of clamps, so you don't have to have so many clamps. Um, and if you wanted to do the blade clamping first, let that dry, and then switch it over to the the, the grip, so you can clamp that one. Let that dry. You don't have to have too many clamps to do 
each portion of that separately. But to do it all together, you got to have a few. Here we go. We're moving on. We've got we've got the clamps. We've we've let it dry. I let this dry. I left the paddle there to dry for two days, which is plenty of time. Um, every adhesive has their own dry time, so be certain to read and follow those directions. This is the paddle after those those clamps came off. Looking pretty good. Kind of looks more like a paddle. Um, the further we go, the more paddle it looks like, and it's and it's coming along nicely. All right, so we're gonna move on from the glue and clamping section to the design and shaping section. So the the two plastic and, and metal shaft paddles, um, they're they're kind of short. They're they're meant for youth. Uh, the the middle paddle is the one we're making on the picture on the right, and it's the same paddle on the right and the left. You can see the paddle on the right has not gone through the planer, which is a, a machine that just gently takes off a, a small layer of the paddle to make it one flat surface at a time. And the paddle on the left in, in the image there, that has gone through the planer. So you can kind of see some uh, topography or a little texture going on with the paddle on the right versus the one on the left. And you can kind of see a little uh, outline of a paddle drawn on that one on the left. And we have used that with the current paddles that we have in stock and supply that we use for our paddle programs. And here's that outline again throughout the entire paddle from the blade all the way up to the grip and throughout the shaft. We've, we've drawn a center line where the center line is the two cedar pieces that have come together is our center line. And we've, we went out from there half an inch on each side, maybe a little bit more. Uh, to create that inch and a quarter thickness that we want and we can we can kind of come down from there. Uh, the next step is is to use a jigsaw or a bandsaw and that cuts our design out. Uh, after the excess wood the paddle was uh, put, you can put that to trimming um, through a planer and we talked about that planer before and that planer really works wonders. Uh, kind of due to all the excitement we, we didn't actually get a picture of the paddle going through the planer. It was, uh, it was amazing. We might have to do this, this presentation one more time and, and actually get these things out here for you all to see because it's, it's pretty cool. All right, moving on to that, we're going to draw our center lines. This is a trick that I learned to kind of bring your paddle down to a center point all the way through. Uh, so you'll see the three lines here on both pictures. Uh, you want to create that center line on your paddle and then measure an eighth of an inch on both sides of that center line. So then you have your quarter inch measurement that your, your blade, especially your blade, will, will kind of narrow down to on the edges there. All right, you can see that our our paddle's all cut down and, and trimmed out, and we've got our grip there. And we'll talk about grip a little bit as we move along, but we're gonna talk about sanding here. Sanding, uh, this is where your face mask really comes into play. It's gonna be your best friend keeping all those shavings out of your mouth and your nose. Um, when, you, when you go to sand, you, you'll start with a, a 30 grit paper, and you'll kind of move up from there to a 40, 50, 60 grit. Uh, maybe into a uh, an 80 as you as you get a little bit more comfortable with where your paddle's going, and you want to start fine tuning it. Then you're going to go to a 120, and then eventually go to a 220. And your final sanding throughout the entire paddle will be that 220 of of the sanding. We'll talk a little bit more about sanding, but now we're going to talk about the uh, the shape of the the shaping of the shaft here. Um, what I used here was a, a router with a, a quarter inch bit to create the curve on the on the shaft itself to, to help round it out a little bit better. Um, you don't have to have a perfectly round shaft, just one that's comfortable for your hand to take a grip on. Uh, the, also, you want to be sure to leave 
at least that inch in diameter for the strength and durability of that shaft. Because this is what's going to, you know, kind of move down the, the the water with you if you're if you're actually using this. If you're if you're just hanging it on the wall, you don't need to be as picky with this if you don't want to. And here's that grip. We're going to talk about the shaping of that paddle grip. We used a pear shape grip. So after cutting out that pear shape with the, the jigsaw or the bandsaw, whichever one you'd like to use, you can, you can take an edge grinder and, and make these quick indents. I wish I had a laser pointer here. And you can see at the top of the picture on the, on the right, there's a little bit of indent and that's for your palm and your fingertips to grip on each side. And we use, again, that edge grinder to make that imprint. Uh, do take note, if, if you're using an edge grinder, the, the harder you're pushing, the more it's gonna chew up that wood pretty quick. We use the nice 30 grit for the uh, start of that. And, uh, you know, within seconds, it was perfect. Uh, the, the grip there on the, on the right is the finished grip. The grip on the left is the one we kind of started with, with adding our five inch width to it with, you, you see the center down the middle there, and then there's a small pine on both sides, and then there's a little bit larger pine on both sides to create that, help create that shape of that pear shape. All right, back to sanding time, because we are not done sanding. So yes, more sanding. When you smooth down that paddle after that 120 grit paper, you want to use a damp rag and wipe down the paddle. And then you use a uh, 220 grit uh, the paddle or the water. Adding the water to the paddle helps to raise the fibers on the wood. So you're truly making sure that you're getting all that fibers, making that paddle as smooth as possible. Uh, because as you're, as you're going to use it down the, the waterways and the canoes there, you might not be wearing gloves and you definitely don't want to splinter at that point. So you'll see the one on the left versus the one on the right. And uh, the one on the right there has a little bit of stain on it. I think I, I stained it a couple times and then sanded it again and then stained it again just to make sure that we're, we're hitting all those spots. Right. This is a, a good picture of what we've got staining going on. The picture on the left shows stain on the top and no stain on the bottom. The picture on the right is a fully stained paddle. Um, as you're staining these guys, if you do one side, you're going to want to let it dry again. Every product has its own drying time, so please read the follow the instructions on uh, the labels of the products that you use. I use the nice amber stain and I applied it with a foam brush. And one of the, the tips and hints that I got from when I selected this was if you're, if you're using it, you don't want to mash that foam brush down because it kind of creates the bubbles. You want long, slow strokes to prevent the bubbling with, with both the stain and the sealant. If you get bubbles, you have to go back and sand your paddle again. Um, you want to apply at least two coats of each, uh, factoring in the dry time between both. So that's where it could take you only three to four hours, and it could take you a couple weeks. Here we go, I'm showing you before that staining process. Again, the unstained, unfinished paddle. There's some of the product that I used. There's my foam brush and, and a nice little block sander. go. Went from the plain paddle to a little bit of stain on there and you can see the, the colors start to shine through the wood. Uh, again that's cedar right down the middle. And we've got pine on both sides of that cedar and on the edges of the blade is our sycamore. And we just jumped from a an unfinished paddle there to a one with a wood burn in it and I did I, I got the paddle wood burnt uh, this was uh, 
This is going to be a paddle that's going to be used by one of our staff on site. He goes by the name of the Commodore. His name's Tim. Um, he uses, uh, he's going to be using this on some of the paddles, such as the Twilight Paddle Family Tides. We've even got an upcoming couples canoeing program coming up. Um, hope to see you out there. And uh, I hope, hope Tim's using this paddle, not just hanging this on his wall. Uh, be sure to check out the the Commodore for for all of his local owl to calls. So he's got a program on our on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, he's calling for a couple of owls, so you can see him there. Uh, back to the wood burning though. Our expert wood burner, Katie. Thanks, uh, thanks, Katie. She did the honors here. She also has a few programs on our YouTube channel, so be sure to dive into those as well. Solar cooking is a good one. Uh, she's got a couple coming up. Calm activities on the 14th of September and glass etching on the 21st of September. Pretty cool programs. Uh, thanks, Katie. Another look to, uh, at the final here. Check that one out. We, we did a little bit more. Uh, after the wood burning, I added a little bit more stain just to see what that would do with the, uh, the wood burn um, as well as the, the sealant. I wanted to kind of fill in some holes there. And Speaking of holes, we'll talk about those in a second, but uh, be sure to, you know, post an image of your paddle if you decide to make a paddle after today, after watching this, or, or any other comment or question, you want to list those below. I'll try to come back and scroll through those and answer them. Uh, and, and subscribe to our, our, our YouTube channel with Henrico Recreation and Parks. And lastly, I'd like to thank... Uh, following folks for helping me and inspiring me with this project, which would be Tim, Elaine, Mary, Johnny, and Katie. Um, back up to those holes, you see a couple of knots and eyes in the wood. And this is a, another helpful little bit if you're going to make your own paddle. You want to avoid using those within the shaft by all means. And if, and if you're, you have them on there, place them in the middle if you can't if you can't avoid them go ahead and place them in the middle of the uh the two pieces that make it um this is an example of a laminate shaft we've got that one strong center line with the cedar and the laminate portions of the pine and sycamore uh, we use sycamore because that's one of tim's favorite trees to talk about on the canoe paddles that we go on you can't hear enough about the sycamores out there with him and Thank you all for joining us today, and again, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us.